Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you my Divided Hearts bracelet. The name was chosen by loves underscore looming 23 on Instagram. And I also want to thank everyone else who took the time to give me some name suggestions. I do appreciate it. For this design here, you'll need 171 bands total. The breakdown of that is 48 of the turquoise color here. You'll need 63 of the inner purple. You'll need 40 of this pinky color here and 20 of the yellow. So this is a reversible design. You could wear it on either side. And I think that looks really cool too. Um, before we get started, I just quickly wanted to say for those of you who are not new to my channel, you've already probably noticed the background is not black, which is what I always use. But I had to get a new light bulb and the new light bulb gave such a flashback and was really, uh, it, the glare was like really bad. So when I was looming, it was going to be difficult for you guys to see what I was doing. So I had to grab this backdrop. At the end of the video, if you could comment down below what you think. Should I keep it like this or should I try to figure out how to get my black backdrop back? Um, I just don't want it, I don't want the quality of my videos to go down. So I would really greatly appreciate your feedback and what you guys think I should do. All right, so without rambling on and on, let's go ahead and get started. To make this bracelet, you will want to have two looms. You want to have them aligned, and you'll have your first loom, and then where your blue base is, you'll have your second loom connected right after it. So two looms will get you a full wrap around your wrist without an extension. The design itself can be made on one loom, but it will not be big enough to fit around your wrist. You would need an extension of some sort. You'll also need one C-clip and your hook. So the first thing that we're going to grab is whatever color you want for the turquoise. Right here. You're going to need all of your bands close by because we lay them section by section. So you'll need all of them. But that's the first color that we're going to grab now. And I'm going to use red. So we're just going to start by grabbing one, sitting it on the center and leaving it there for when we close it up. And then we're going to go on the left and on the right. Still using the same color, we're going to go forward and forward on the left. Now you're going to want to decide whatever color you want to use for the center here where, where the purple is. If you want it to be all one color like I did on this one, then the next bands that we lay, you will just do in the same color that you laid for the border. I'm going to do this pattern here and do a different color. So I'm going to do green. But again, if you want it to be all one color, then just do whatever color you just did right here. So we're going to lay it forward from the middle. And then from the middle, we're going to lay a V. So diagonally out to the left and diagonally out to the right, like so. Now we're going to choose whatever color you want for my yellow here. And I am going to use purple, well, light purple. And we're going to lay this horizontally across these three pins, but we're going to go around the back of the middle one. So you're going to connect it to the left. I kind of hold it with my finger because you have to pull it behind the center and then connect it. To the right like that so that's what it should look like and now for this section we have one more set of colors to lay and that's going to be the pink in this one here so i'm going to use purple but i'm going to use a dark jelly purple and we're just going to lay it in the center here and we're going to go horizontally left and right like so And I apologize if you can hear the water running in the background. I film in the basement so you can hear like everything. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to continue to do that section by section. So now we're going to start all over again with whatever color you used right here for the first color. That was my red. So we'll start by laying two forward. Okay. 
our second color, which is whatever color you laid for the V. So we'll start by going forward and then from the center diagonally to the left, center diagonally to the right. Push that down. We're going to do the horizontal, which is what I used my light purple for. We'll connect it on the left pin, swing it around the middle and connect to the right. Push it down. And lastly, I'll grab my dark purple, which is the two horizontal ones. So from the middle, we'll go to the left and the middle will go to the right. Or two straight ones. <laughs> Depends how you want to look at it. Now, the only thing I would say is for, I would lay them exactly how I'm laying them. Like don't lay the right side first and then the left. Always lay the left and then the right so that when we go to loop it, you don't get confused and it makes things a lot easier because they're going to be pretty tight when we get to loop them. So that's just one thing that makes it a little easier. So once again, we're going to start that all over again and I'm going to start to speed up a little bit. So we'll go straight. From the middle, we'll go straight. Do our V. We'll do our horizontal middle. And lastly, the two straights. Or not straight, but you know what I mean. Horizontal. <laughs> so I will keep doing that. And you can follow along. Today is Saturday. And I, I normally like to already have this tutorial up by this morning. But unfortunately, I was not able to film it all. Then my light bulb was acting funny and it blew. So I had to go get like a cheap light bulb for now until my good one comes. But unfortunately, that light bulb was not working with the black backdrop that I normally use. And the glare was just really, really bad. I actually filmed half of it, but it was driving me nuts how bad the glare was. Like on the loom, you couldn't really see because the glare was so bad. So that's why I grabbed this backdrop, but I don't know. It seems like it's really clear to me, but I don't know. I, I need your guys' opinion, what you think. Um, sometimes it can look cheap using different kind of backdrops, but I'm curious of your thoughts if I should keep using this or if I should find another light bulb. <laughs> oh, I almost messed up. If I should find another light bulb and go back to my black one. So let me know what you think. My son and his girlfriend are upstairs and you can probably hear them laughing and <laughs> being a little loud. So I do a total of 21 sets. I count each row or each like section as a set. So where the V's are. So again, I do 21 of these and that gets me a bracelet of, it's close to seven and a half. I would say just about seven and a half inches, maybe a little bit under. Um, so if you have a bigger wrist size, you would do more sets. Um, I know when I only did 20 sets, it was a little under seven. Um, so if that can help you guys decide. But I'm going to go off screen. It's just a little easier for me to get these laid. If you have any problems, just rewind to watch the previous instructions. Okay, so I am on my 21st set. So this one right here is my 21st. So I laid my side straight ones, which is what I'm calling the border, my forward and my V. Now you are not going to lay the horizontal, the one that you skip on the middle. Do not lay that. And then we are going to lay two horizontal on these two, but we're not going to do it in the color that you were doing it, like the dark purple here. You're going to grab whatever color you used for the border. And I used red. 
So again, lay it on the left and the right, and that's how we close the end off. And then we can turn our loom around. And now grab one more of that same color and we're gonna lay a cap band on the middle. So we're just gonna wrap that around two times so that we can start our looping process. So the first thing that we're gonna do is go in the center and bring these back to themselves. So the top one will go to the left and the bottom will go to the right or second one, I should say. We're going to loop the green ones. So we're gonna go forward with the center. All of the green are actually gonna to come to the center. So middle forward, and then I go to the right, grab that diagonal band and you bring that to the center, and then you do the same on the left side. So all three of those come to the middle. So now we need to reach behind the pin and grab the horizontal band that we laid. So I'm just going to show you which band I'm talking about. It's my light purple here. It's the one that we skipped around the middle pin when we were laying them. But it's under the two horizontal ones. So it can be a little tricky to grab. But you have to reach behind there. And you have to grab it. It doesn't matter if you're over here, over here. As long as you can get your hook on that single band there and then you're just going to pull it up and over the center pin and sit it down like that. So now we need to go in the center and we're going to loop the horizontals back to themselves. So the top one will go to the left and the second one will go to the right. But there are a lot of bands in here that you have to push out of the way. It's going to be very tight. So push in there. Only make sure you're only grabbing the top one. And if you laid them like I did, this top one should be coming from the left. And then you'll go back in. Make sure you're in the center. As you can see, it can be a little tricky because there's a lot of bands on there. But as long as you're pushing them all out of the way, you should be able to get to that. Or you will be able to get to that, not should. Okay, so once we've done that, we now need to loop that horizontal band again, which is the light purple, how we brought it up here. And there's two ways you can do that. If you look on the side here, it's the fifth band down. So we have four of them up here. You're going to grab the fifth one. Like so. And then you're just going to bring it up over the pin and release it like that. I'll show you another way that you can do it. If you come right here and just pull the top band out of the way, you'll see that purple band right there. And you can grab it and pull it over. So whichever way is easier, it does the same thing. And that's the end of that entire section. So we're going to go ahead and do that all over again. So we're going to go in the middle here, grab the very bottom band. There's only one band left on that pin and we'll bring it forward. We'll loop our diagonals back to themselves. Which is to the center. Now we'll loop our borders straight. And now we need to loop that band over the center again. So like I said, it can be a little tedious or tricky. So reach behind. And grab that single band there and just pull it over the middle. We'll go back into that pin and now we will loop the horizontals back to themselves. So the top one should go to the left. And remember, they are tight. So you have, might have to pull a little bit. And the second one should go to the right. Like so. 
And now we will loop that purple band again. And remember, you can do this either way. But if you come on the side here, it will be the fifth band down. Just make sure you're only grabbing that one. Because it's easy to accidentally grab more than one. And we'll bring it up and over. I'll show you the other way again of how I usually do it. Just move the top band and it will be the second one right there and pull it over. Some of you might find that way tricky, so you can stick to that way if it's easier. That was the last part of that section, so we're going to do it all over again. So we'll bring the middle forward. Loop our diagonals back to themselves, which also comes to the center. We'll loop our borders straight. Now we need to loop the horizontal over the middle here. Sit it in front of the pin and we'll go in and loop our two horizontals. Like so. And now we will loop the other side of the light purple. Bring it up and over. Like so. I'm going to fix this because it's a little twisted. And you guys, ignore my fingernails. I can't even believe I'm filming with them looking like this. They are so bad. But, I mean, one person after another has been sick in my house. And my nails are like the last thing I'm thinking about. So, just ignore them. <laughs> so, we're going to continue doing that. I'm going to speed up a little bit. But you can always hit the slow down um, option if you're confused or need to go slower. You will want to keep pushing them down too since there's so many layers on there. So back um, before I took my very long break... I designed, I had a, a handful of designs, but when I came back, I've already released them. And I have one left that I haven't did from back then because even though I came up with that design on my own, it was actually basically a variation of my sky or midnight sky bracelet. I didn't release it because it actually was already made by someone else. Now, I didn't follow their tutorial. I came up with it on my own, but still the design had already been you know, made by another designer. So I just put it on the back burner. But it is like one of my favorites. I worked really hard on working it out and finally getting it to how I liked it. So it's sad for me not to release it, you know, after working so hard on it back then. But, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes you just, you know, if it's already out there, what can you do? However, I was noticing there is no tutorial on the design. And it's called the Gemini bracelet. So are any of you guys familiar with that? The Gemini bracelet? I believe it was designed originally by Star Lumi, maybe. I don't know. But I know it was called the Gemini bracelet. 
I came across some pictures the other day and I'm like, oh, that's it. Because I knew it looked familiar and I'm like, I know I've seen this before, but I couldn't figure out who it was by. But the moral of the story is there is no tutorial on it. I don't know if there was back then, but there certainly isn't now. And I'm wondering if you guys would be interested in seeing it. So I wouldn't give it a new name, even though I came up with it on my own. Oops, I just grabbed two bands at once. Oh, okay. I saved it. <laughs> um, even though I came up with the design on my own, since the design was already out there and named by another designer, I would give them the credit, explain, you know, how I did create it also, but they were the original designer. I would keep the name the same, but I think it's just too beautiful of a design to not put it out there because I'm sure there's going to be so many people who want to make it because it's just too cool. So at the end of the video, I'm going to show you my rendition so you can see what I'm talking about. And let me know if it's something that you guys would want to see. Actually, I might show it right now in case you guys don't stick around until the end. I'm going to grab it. This is the bracelet that I'm referring to. It's really simple to make, but it is super cool. Like, I was so, so happy with it. I originally had the these fishtailed, but it was too scrunched up. I just think it's super, super cool. So would you guys want to see this? Have you seen this already? And do you think I should do a tutorial on it? Let me know down below. Okay, so we're literally going to continue doing that all the way up the loom. I'm pretty sure you guys have it down on what you need to do. But if you need to rewatch the instructions, just go ahead and rewind it. I'm going to continue getting mine done. And when I reach the top, I will come back and show you how to close it up. Okay, so I'm getting to the last one now. So I'm going to do this one on camera with you guys. So we'll do the same that we've been doing. Pulling the middle forward and doing your diagonals just like you did the whole time. And then we'll bring the border straight up. And then from there, the only thing we have to do is bring the tops into the center. To close it up. Like so. So we will need our C-clip. You're going to want to locate the back part of the band. That we laid there at the beginning. And then go down in here. And there are a lot of bands that you have to get through. And make sure you're grabbing that very last one. And bring the two ends together. And that's what we'll put our C-clip on. Now, I highly recommend you don't just rip this off of the loom. Use your hook and release both sides all the way down. And then you can pull the middle off. And just to FYI, I had two boo-boos. <laughs> two mistakes. Right here, I forgot to bring the purple up and over. And right here. So, I made a mistake, but I'm going to take mine off of the loom, and I'll show you it when I'm done. Okay, so I pulled mine off of the loom. You'll see where I forgot to loop my purple over. But you're just going to locate your cat band here, and connect your C-clip, like so. So, there you have my completed Divided Hearts bracelet. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. 
Um, if you do make this, tag me on Instagram at loves to loom. I want to thank loves underscore looming 23 for choosing the name for me. I appreciate it. And um, also let me know what I should do about the backdrop, guys. If I should go back to my black backdrop. And if I should film a tutorial on the Gemini bracelet. Let me know and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.